This is Sharif Jamil. I'm an environment activist. Uh, I organize people's movement to protect the environmental degradation. I have been working for the protection of Bangladesh environment for about two decades. I work nationally with Bangladesh Puribesh Andulam Baba, Bangladesh Environment Movement. It's a civil society platform. My name is Rizwana. I'm a lawyer. I work for a group called Bangladesh Environmental Lawyers Association. It's a non-profit organization. This organization is working to promote and popularize the notion of environmental justice. So we work with communities who have environmental grievances. We take their causes to the court. We also file public interest litigation on important environmental issues. Bangladesh is part of the largest active delta in the world and entire Ganges and Brahmaputra river systems go to the Bay of Bengal through Bangladesh. The entire country is formed from the seals of the river. The people, livelihood, economy, everything is run by river. If you talk about climate change, Bangladesh is one of the most vulnerable countries. If that happens, the way it's being feared, the way it's being uh, predicted, then one third of Bangladesh will go under water, which means that we will be losing 21 of our districts. At the same time, the entire coastal forest that we have will also be gone. We will have to redraw our map, and that map will not have the presence of Shundarbans the world's largest mangrove forest. The heritage of this nation is agriculture. It's a fertile land. And that's why there are so many people here. So we should have a plan that would grow our economic growth through agricultural development. But we did not do that. We decided to grow the economy through industrial growth. And power and electricity is the basic for industrialization. So this government came up with a power system master plan in 2010, focusing on coal as the major source of total power sharing. They decided to develop some major hubs from where those plants will be coming up. And we came to know that a major hub is right on the Sundarbans a global world heritage site. If that plant is in operation, we fear that the entire Shundarbans will be gone. If this Shundarbans is gone for this 1,320 megawatt thermal plant, then we will be losing a global heritage. It's not something that Bangladesh owns. And if this, this Shundarban is gone, it's not only one forest that we'll be losing, it's an ecosystem that we'll be losing that has been protecting the coastal people from onslaughts of disasters like cyclones. It is the home of Royal Bengal Tigers. So with Shundarbans, with the forest gone, that ecosystem will be gone. The home for the Royal Bengal Tigers will be gone. And the coastal people will be losing the natural shelter that they had against some of the natural calamities that are very frequent and very often in coastal districts of Bangladesh. It cannot fight with the nature like this. We protested it and then we came to know there is another one half very close to the Sundarbans also from the other side in Potuakali district and Borbuna district which is called Paira Hub. You know our national fish, Hilsha, Ilish. Ilish is very, very sensitive and very distinct fish species. And they are setting up at least three coal plants right in the middle of one of the largest fish migration channels of Bangladesh. And we looked more and we found another one hub, which is in the Cox's Bazar, the tourist capital of the nation, and the backbone of salt industry of the country. This ecological degradation has not necessarily only have impact on the ecological and natural treasures it is also important because this country is densely populated country. When you are polluting its air, when you are polluting its water, it is impacting health in terms of 
मास मास राइट्स वायोलेशन The official name is something like India Bangladesh Friendship Coal Plant, but we very popularly call it the Rampal uh, Coal Power Plant. A significant part of the construction has actually been completed. The government and the entire country are divided on this. While the government is sticking to its plan to go ahead with it, it has taken this particular plant as a prestige issue for it. the rest of the country seems to be opposing the plan but the government is still going ahead with it because they actually had to concede to public opposition in fulbari where they wanted to go for open pit coal mining and they also had to abandon another plan uh, because of public opposition so whatever opposition is taking place here in bangladesh they are sometimes taking repressive stance against the opposition to suppress the opposing views and this particular plant is being uh, built by both india and bangladesh together had it been in india india would have never allowed this to happen because under the indian national law you can't build a thermal power plant within 20 kilometers from a protected forest area so something that would not be allowed to be built in india is being built in bangladesh whatever lobbying is being done globally it's not the bangladesh's political weight that's being thrown in the international gathering only it's india's political weight that's also being used to counter those arguments i think for bangladesh government and india government they both want to convey messages to their constituencies that no matter what they'll be proceeding with the dirty energy so the main two aspects of environmental justice meaningful participation and no disproportionate sharing of burden those are being denied both in the case of environmental justice and in the case of energy justice we don't have a say in the entire decision making process but the civil society is putting forward concrete plans civil society organizations who are operating here in bangladesh international expert agencies are painting the whole canvas about how bangladesh can give up its dirty energy schemes and actually can move to a much better renewable production of energy bangladesh is in such a crossroad now it's a densely populated country a lot of food you need it's uh, in the economic crossroad it's growing we need to keep it continued but we also need to think very carefully what the impacts are coming up after 10 years from this development if you see the rivers around the capital city of the country all those rivers are dead there is no aquatic life it's all polluted because of this unplanned industrialization we activists want to make a bridge between the people and the policy making process so what we do we go to the people we tell them the truth because we work together with the scientists and researchers we know the information from uh, global communities like aifa so we take information we give science we translate those into people's language we found aifa was the greatest help they give a report in 2016 on the possibility and feasibility of bangladesh energy transition towards renewable and sustainable energy production we organize meetings at national level we bring ministers we bring government high officials who are involved with this we bring academicians and researchers and we discuss about it we sometimes go to the court because sometimes some voices are not hard enough we are not protesting the nation's development or anything we are only assisting we are only trying to help it more sustainable and more helpful for the nation the hope is people actually are getting more aware about the need for a sound environment we have seen the price of unregulated development and we don't want it anymore you can have polluting industries in hundreds you can have mega projects in thousands 
But once you lose a forest, once you lose a river, you'll not be able to recreate it. It is important that we continue our critical role so that the development agenda is redefined to actually serve the people. Thank you.